Welcome everyone to this not weekly but every so often update of IT news and developments so people don't want to get triggered with political news so probably should mention that there was Earth Overshoot Day on July the 29th the day occurring earlier each year and a big part of it being grown amount of CO2 emissions and so on so let's better close this quickly before trigger people. In more amazing news, uh, Expanse was prolonged, confirmed here, season 5, amazing stuff. One of the better IT TV shows in my opinion, but leave me in the comments below, which, well, of course, except um, old, good old Star Trek, which also there, by the way, could have mentioned that guy was this also in the, maybe this was was this just the other week? Yeah, so PK also, I mean, just that uh, fun stuff only live. PK show series, now that I say this probably should have. Um, yeah, also announced maybe uh, the other week, maybe somehow, whatever. Anyway, with uh, all the good old crew of maybe mostly next generation times, but in any case, expands also in case you may or may not have known that series already but always leave me in the comments below which uh, science fiction stuff you prefer and approve of in more amazing news that we are approve of kvm of linux kernel virtual machine stuff got risk 5 support risk 5 of course already covered here instructions at architecture and such the next upcoming open source, um, yeah, instructions architecture and not the greatest, latest and greatest type of home in silicon out there, but apparently, as we had some days ago, Chinese companies are working on this. And uh, so, yeah, there is uh, virtualization support. Of course, it is already supported in QEMU. So if even like you and me who do not yet have latest, grand, latest and greatest high performance RISC-V silicon, um, you can already use QEMU or even JavaScript from Fab Fabrice Bellard. Uh, JavaScript in the browser even run risk 5 but certainly, in my opinion, usually with real silicon, it's usually much more amazing, certainly more high performance. So virtualization there is coming. So then when you have this in your hands so sometime soon, hopefully on the desktop or server systems uh, for the same feature set, similar feature set, um, yeah, many more possible KVM world switch and yeah, so on. And uh, yeah, as it's supported in hardware, well, supposedly if you have high performance silicon that supports this, then of course it's like transparent, like we are used from QEMU with KVM that we can already run on ARM power PC. Actually, fun fact, maybe another day we try this on the P3 now that you have one here with more than 256 megabyte of memory one of the most expensive memory upgrade in latest times and uh, maybe so previously and for most of you who do not have a development tool doesn't make so much fun but maybe for just the scientific uh, test we try kvm if it maybe accidentally is already supported would also be fun fact also again back in the day didn't make much sense with a limited amount of memory but now at least i or you if you get the development tool could even run mac os at least that days were not as peak bugs and still usable and certainly smaller and less memory use and such but would be a fun educational science project here to run mac os in power pc of course on the p3 just for the fun of it in similar more amazing uh, news um, cross air launches uh, new 32 gigabyte modules for high performance lpxdd uh, for memory and uh, that is uh, just, uh, so there are right now, I think, only two vendors that provide 32 gigabyte modules and uh, for uh, DDR4. And until, until like last month, you could only order 16 gig memory modules for all of you playing along at home with Intel and AMD stuff. And fun fact, so uh, the other is Samsung also. And what this means, of course, there were larger capacity modules available, but they were either uh, registered or buffered or something. And I think all the consumer boards do not support, of course, none of the 
consumer board supports buffered are registered. Wait a second, registered buffered. Anyway, I think consumer board usually do not support any of those. And yeah, and there's also load reduced, right? L LR load reduced. Um, and I think all the consumer boards do not support any of those. Maybe you, you might be lucky with um, load reduced, but don't quote me on that, probably not. And uh, so this is unbuffered, like is it abbreviated with U? Maybe unbuffered uh, UDDR4, maybe at some sites. So fun fact, fun fact, I ordered this already. And uh, exactly this here for the Ryzen build, I have no official confirmation if that works in the AM4 board. There is a ASUS ROG uh, Republic of Gamer Gaming Nonsense. The mini ITX Ryzen build that I usually have around here. So we will see tomorrow or the day after when this arrives. Keep your fingers crossed if that works for a quick test. But um, yeah, of course, a little bit on the unsupported side. So th the difference is that until now you could get larger modules, but they were all registered or buffered. And um, yeah, with this you could, so I, the mini ITX board, of course, only has two slots. So I get this to up an upgrade from 32 to 64 gig. And uh, if you have a more fancy uh, board, a non-mini ITX board with four slots, then of course you can get a whopping 128 gigabyte into there for your gaming or computer science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all this, uh, or uh, compiling, compiling source stuff. Yeah, fun stuff when memory modules already get to the 32 gigabyte side. Coming to the not as amazing news, uh, of course, uh, each day and week, some security nightmare theater here, Capital One, uh, apparently, Say, says here hacker breached accounts of 100 million people ex amazon employee arrested apparently here according to this news anyway they said on monday sensitive financial information including social security bank account numbers from over 100 million people were exposed of course not cool totally not cool massive data bre data breach i wonder a little bit uh, were they running windows would always be maybe they should always point out a little bit more what kind of the infrastructure was breached there but our recurring reminder, maybe don't run Windows on servers and keep your Linux updates systems patched. And apparently this massive data, data breach led to the arrest of a former Google, uh, Amazon, sorry, misspoke. Um, don't quote me now. Amazon employee, Paige Thompson, 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 anyway, hacker who, a hacker who lived in, lives in Seattle, so not sure, probably sounds like he has done this or something. Um, in any case, uh, never leak data of people, always certainly contact the companies and um, I'm not sure if he, um, I've basically strapped myself with a bomb worth fucking dropping Capital One, Docs admitted it was distributed those buckets, uh, whatever. Anyway, um, allegedly posted this information from the bank on her GitHub profile, which includes link to the Horizon, including FBI tour. Um, yeah, not sure if this really means so. This is, of course, totally not cool to leak information. Never do this. Um, just uh, don't really understand why people, allegedly, whatever, only read you the summary. Dave is back. Welcome. Story go to with Windows. Um, just a story that often, at least with all the ransomware, like hospitals and stuff, where they, uh, in the previous weeks and months, episodes, they usually had to pay hundreds of thousands, if not sometimes, yeah, 600 thousand or something, I think that was dollars. Usually the ransomware was Windows, and uh, I wish they would more often disclose there more precisely, but um, my understanding was a summary of the last years that there were usually more security vulnerabilities, and then, of course, the systems are more often breached than not. Speaking of which, um, more IoT devices, and there you have your Linux, certainly IoT devices are more often Linux, there you have your uh, sabotaging IoT devices that security vulnerabilities on each side. Um, but again, keep your systems updated, right? Of course, the recurring theme with internet of uh, not as amazing thing devices, when the stuff doesn't get updates and uh, even there on the Linux side lingers around on the internet with uh, too many vulnerabilities to expose. 
And um, yeah, also the thing, uh, exploiting unencrypted protocols, um, the big problem, probably in my opinion anyway, but as usual, share your comments what you think of this Internet of Stuff quickly clobbered together without any upgrade, update plans on not as uh, secure protocols, they even write the unencrypted protocols. That is, of course, uh, certainly a very huge issue if everyone can just inject, inject their, their plain text and if this is unencrypted, certainly not even need to break the encryption and just inject whatever commands they want here. Let's see what was it. Um, modern civilians cameras. Yeah, so also this was, um, yeah, now that I read this, um, the summary does not even pay this justice because this was security cameras, now that I uh, scroll over the text. So this was apparently uh, cameras and um, there was it switch lights and what commands such as switch lights on and off and IoT sensors, actuators, controllers, many things, smart lighting and whatever. And I think in this particular case, this were surveillance, surveillance cameras, which is of course um, extremely um, hilarious and, and unresponsible if security cameras were not encrypted and everyone who had access to that often if you follow some people who post their open access to cameras on Twitter of, also of course the recurring theme do not post others people I mean notify these people and don't post it on Twitter just that I often have seen stuff scrolling by so yeah unencrypted retime RTP um, retime streaming protocol uh, streaming video typically, typically installed, configured, deployed by personal that has little or no knowledge. Well, uh, you could also argue uh, maybe they need to quote there. It's of course always easy to say um, little to no knowledge. Um, quoting there, Dave, what has it to do with Windows? What has it um, there you say? Maybe quotes there that they really have little to no knowledge, but whatever. Um, it's also not the people's fault if they get some manager orders these cameras and you need to install them and even if you tell your manager hello this is unencrypted then then the manager says yeah don't care install it that's your job install it there but um yeah this is why i point this out here uh, not for public shaming just as public service reminder that often if you buy this kind of stuff it is at times not the highest quality and this is why i point this out by the way mqtt uh, yeah also um now that I see this, uh, even as AAA brands, as Philips, apparently full report details, all the attacks we, they performed in the lab, um, spoiler alert, they lever leveraged insecure HTTP protocol to manipulate Philips U smart lights, and we show how MQTT, which MQTT is some serverless or so, I think, um, protocol, um, one of the most popular protocols, IoT communications can be used to disrupt the IoT systems itself. So yeah, this is why I do this shout out here when people uh, here in the audience hopefully help spread the world. All the stuff, we are here on the verge, on the threshold of installing more and more Internet of Thing devices and everything that I've seen so far and the news recurring IT security, insecurity horror show of the week here we need to spread awareness that we cannot the people the problems also people don't understand this right like managers and normal workers even if they have a very high education in in architecture or whatever and they want these devices installed there need to be more awareness and more discussion about security threats and you also need to think about this you install light bulbs window actuators um, and all kind of doorbells and security uh, so surveillance CCTV cameras and they this apparently to this according to this accord they were highly insecure if you read this unencrypted and so on um, unencrypted for me reads like plain text if this is really true only quoting the news here and this is of course uh, completely unresponsible uh, and even if uh, one step further even if this would be secure today which in this case it was not, but even if it would be encrypted and so on, you need to think about this. This is in, in buildings installed for 10 years, maybe even more likely 20 years, because you don't change light bulbs and uh, doorbells and 
security camera so often. And even if it's secure today, which in this case, again, was it was not, you need an, an management plan to keep this stuff updated because even if it's secure today, there might be a security issue tomorrow. And I see uh, just with smartphones, updates being canceled just or not canceled, but stopped and not further deployed after two or three years time, if you're lucky. And this is the same with this IoT devices. Right now we have not, not really an infrastructure to keep this stuff securely connected. Maybe we need to think about actually maybe business model for my company, maybe some kind of management stuff with real encryption and management um, inventory lists of updates, pending updates, uh, pending security vulnerabilities and stuff. And uh, then of course, you need some some kind of support plan for all these sensitive devices to really keep track of them and uh, also take them out of service. If you don't get updates for your surveillance cameras in five years time, then maybe you can't also simply not use them anymore. And then we just like on smartphones, we need to rate uh, and choice devices on the update history and security vulnerability history. And um, yeah, not like by the cheapest that you don't get updates after maybe even a year or maybe never. In similar news, but not as insecure news, uh, people right here, uh, even from IEEE Spectrum, of all people, 5G waveform is a battery vampire. And I think I read already some other uh, news articles that the deployment of some 5G prototypes decrease the battery life often dramatically. And as they write as carriers roll out, 5G industry group 3GPP is considering other ways of to, uh, to modulate radio signal, uh, signals. They write here, um, members of the mobile telephone industry were breaking over the speed of the development, uh, one proposal and whatever, uh, where's the battery? Um, they write here, they, they think that carriers really don't understand the impact on the mobile phone and what it's going to do with the battery life. They say here, James, Kimmery, director of marketing of RF for RF and software defined radio research, National Instruments Group. And yeah, if this is really as bad as they write here, this is of course, um, yeah, you, you also wonder if this really is true and if they already warned people in uh, in the past, last year during the standardization pro process, you really wonder um, why they go forward and deploy this, but maybe the answer is as simple as they need a higher number and then they just deploy this and bring it to market, even though it kills battery life, allegedly. And um, yeah, but uh, of course, time will show when we get devices and with a high frequency, of course, the range is quite degraded in any case. So the... Uh, so the distance that 5G can bridge there, especially with buildings, with concrete and steel enforced buildings is not that high anyway. Um, with that being said, continuing with the news now, this will trigger a lot of people, all the Apple fans, I'm sorry, by the way, I oh, yeah, right, this was. Uh, we have a couple of Apple news and yeah, you have to wonder, will this soon be the end of Apple because uh, some not as amazing Apple News, maybe also my display is flickering erratically. Why is this Mac Mini failing here? Or Anyway, Apple reports declining profits and stagnant growth. Again, unfortunately, this article is payroll. So I think I saw some summary on Slashdot or something. Apple something. Um, yeah, Apple declining profits. Uh, here is a quote from the article that is payroll. Thanks for that. Also, my display is now acting up. Similar Apple news. Uh, so um, Apple has long performed like clockwork, growth, uh, growing steadily and producing an eye ever growing stream of profit. Not anymore. On Tuesday, the Silicon Valley behemoth said the net income has fallen 30% and the revenue rose 1% in the latest quarter with iPhone sales continuing to decline and gains in the profit services and variability business failing to make up for the difference. Somehow the display is right now rather, what is wrong with it? Um, I can't mix this up. Yeah, anyway, no surprise uh, there. We also have some more indicators what's going on there because Bob 
Burrow of uh, all Apple fan people posted here some popularity of Apple commentary 2004 to present. Of course, this is just some Google trends, but in my opinion, this summarizes quite good the state of Apple um, satisfaction you have seen on my channel. I'm myself not the very most satisfied here. And when you see this is also my uh, take here on yeah, gluten batteries, failing, failing keyboards and um, ultra thin devices that are not as usable to me as a couple of millimeter thicker devices would be. And there you see, I think this is, as far as I know, uh, ex Apple employee working on the iPhone or something of that sort. And even people like that point out this kind of things. And when even ex Apple employees like they uh, add here to what other people on YouTube like myself and others say then yeah you probably don't need to wonder I think we had another day we had that iPhone XR as a best-selling phone certainly at that price point that is no wonder in similar Apple news Blackhead USA conference is around the door here and um, at least I think it is what is it yes August yeah so this is just around the corner here and uh, look no hands uh, remote interactionless attack surface of the iPhone, apparently the security engineer of Google here, Natalie Silvanovich, wants to burn some zero days here on Apple devices. Apparently they have a handful of uh, remote uh, vulnerabilities required, no user interaction being used to attack the iPhone. And um, it is also, it should be said that on this market of uh, this market of all those companies providing this services of applications and such to break into iPhones, especially for law enforcement and such. This kind of vulnerabilities are worth hundreds thousands of euro and often you need multiple of those, um, often combined like one vulnerability to gain kernel access and another vulnerability to gain further access and so on, maybe to the secure enclave or whatever, or the broadband or whatever. So likely combined, this security vulnerability they want to talk about here something if they fully disclose them yeah two examples of vulnerabilities discovered using those methods and so likely if you on this market of vulnerabilities and security stuff worth hundred thousands of euros not that i want to motivate you just to put you some context of this business of um, selling vulnerabilities to devices especially uh, in ios spaces very popular high-end devices that millions hundred millions of people use in similar news um yeah in security horror show we have this every week now other researchers say here iphone bluetooth traffic leaks phone numbers which is of course crazy in, in certain scenarios and uh, they write here bug um bug maybe bug but whatever accidentally help catch people behind recent malicious airdrop file sharing epidemic and also this actually means um, that you can track people, right? So they write a security researcher says they can extract users' phone number from Bluetooth traffic coming from an iPhone. Uh, so much, by the way, to Apple caring so much about your privacy, as they always state there in the advertisement. And the attack works apparently when Bluetooth is enabled on Apple devices that send BLE, Bluetooth low energy packets in all directions. And yeah, this also by the way, this IB marketing stuff that Apple even themselves, I said, says is anonymous or something of that sort. And they write here that this is hashed, but um, contains a, this traffic contains device identification details such as a phone status, Wi-Fi status, OS version, buffer availability and others. However, the new research published last week, security researchers from Hexway said that during the Certain operations, these BLE packets can also contain a SHAR-256 hash of the device's phone number. Only the first three bytes of the hash are sent, but that's enough to identify your phone's number, researchers say. Since the phone numbers have pretty strict formatting, attacks can use a pre-calculated hash table to recover the rest of the phone number with uh, this kind of rainbow tables. So there you see also, uh, why do we say this here in such details? Because not only because we are an IT channel, but also to spread here some awareness. Some people always think naively, yeah, you hash something, you put there just three bytes and it will be secure and anonymous. But yeah, you say, um, you see, because this is strictly 
limited to numbers and you have some kind of minimum length in these numbers, then you see the, the space of the complexity quite reduces there in your uh, space of, of numbers. And then with rainbow tables, as you can see, there are only so many collisions in such a set of phone numbers and the researchers claim here at least also what sounds quite logical for this kind of reduction of complexity that they can recover quite some phone numbers just from three bytes of the hashes that are sent so just that you know and learn something how this stuff works and yeah just don't do this always um, especially big companies like this uh, do not do this naive implementations of like, yeah, we put there some three bytes of hash that will be anonymous enough. Probably not. And in similar news, what I already uh, said here quite some times, and this news is just adding, adding more, um, more to what I say already because it's something else when I say this as one single company employee of App Store I made already multiple videos what if is everything broken and that we don't like this um, forced sales system forced sales channel and how many problems we have there um, made already a couple of videos and again we have never asked about this and Apple fanboys or other people in the audience here comments below right yeah but you get so much for your 30 percent which uh, fun fact, um, Apple earned hundreds of thousands of euro from my small company. I would rather have this hundreds of thousands of euro uh, over the last years very much on our account for employees, for people to employ, for more people to employ for um, our own infrastructure because certainly we have our own server infrastructure. We have classic licenses still and we like them very much. And I don't really want to pay Apple hundreds of thousands of euro over the years and I would rather very much have invested this money in more employees, more local business, our own infrastructure, which again, we have it anyway. We don't even need Apple services. Our infrastructure, even our small infrastructure is more than enough to handle the sales, the download uh, stuff. So Apple, it's not like we have asked for this, but so what is this about? Uh, Apple's unfair monopolistic policies on the App Store hurt developers and consumers alike, but there's a better way. So they, here on Medium, some uh, let's check by the way this is some yeah i think this is some also developer just like we and you can read this of course uh, for example apple takes a 30 percent cut so through the app store and the same sum what i say here already and uh, they also basically argue exactly that um what i already pointed out in multiple videos uh, Tinder are apparently joining a growing contingent of developers big and small that are removing app store payments from the app store protest what amount to convenience fees and but on iOS Apple's banning alternative payment methods leaving developers stuck with paying 30% and also by the way I find this really relatively unfair right developers like Facebook who at least I would not use payment there but anyway even if Facebook has something to pay I don't know maybe blue, stupid stickers that I don't pay for anyway but as an example most people pay nothing with Facebook Let's, let's assume you have nothing to pay in Facebook because it's this free social crap application and they of course cause enormous traffic for Apple and they might not get a single cent, just an example. Maybe you can buy stickers and maybe Apple earns something, but let's assume like even maybe something on Twitter where most people like an app like Twitter where probably nearly nobody uh, pays with the app for something on Twitter, I would say. So this app, Apple gets no money from, from Twitter and yet they cause eno enormous bandwidth and such for Apple, for all the app downloads and stuff, and yet Apple gets nearly nothing. And from apps like our small company where people really pay between 30 something and, and 100 US dollar or euro, and from us they get hundreds of thousands of euro each another year. And so, yeah, we, we basically, companies, small indie companies like ours, we basically finance all the deployment of uh, Twitter and Facebook apps. Totally unfair, in my opinion. And again, I would not even want this. And even if Apple wants to review this for security reasons, reasons which, in my opinion, is also huge theater and usually are rejected for really stupid stuff that I made already plenty of videos about here. Uh, the last time, I'm not even sure, yes, I think I mentioned this, the last week our app was rejected for the icon, for app icon, because the, both apps use the same icon and then this was okay for 10 years, 
or seven years that was okay and then after hundreds of updates in seven years Apple said from one update hey hello rejected because a duplicated icon like hello are you completely kidding me we have other things to do than painting now we have a pro label on the pro icon that is hilarious and even if they want to review this for the security theater if they like it so much then at least I can still have my own deployment server Apple signs it and I put this on our web server. I would this I already we need we need a web server anyway. I have no problem uh, hosting the bandwidth for our app updates that we anyway have for our direct customers. Um, last point, which I by the way one huge point that I usually forgot to mention, in the App Store you also don't get the money for a very long time. When we sell directly, we have the money instantly to pay salaries and max and electricity and water and stuff, and. In the App Store, first of all, the whole month goes by, you don't see anything. So you sell maybe 10,000 euro, you don't get it. It's a whole month uh, from the first sale to the last sale. In average, of course, the, the time is 14 days for one month and the average day you are waiting is 14 days. And even then, even after the month, you don't get the money because then it takes another, usually about 14 days for Apple to make the final report available before you don't even have the final report. That is another 14 days and then Apple is still not paying you directly and then it takes usually it then it varies depending on their strange fiscal calendar that is completely random I have no idea who made the stupid Apple fiscal calendar up and then they it takes another two to three weeks so on average for your payment for your apps if you want to pay your salary and your electricity and so on and your rent and everything for a company it direct sales you have the money direct instantly and in the App Store, it takes on average 14 days plus 14 days plus 14 days. So this makes an average of uh, six weeks to get the money, right? Which is also hilarious after Apple took 30%. It's don't get me started on the App Store business. It's uh, no matter how you turn it, I find it unnecessary. And there you see Apple profit and growth is stagnating and falling. The only thing that is growing is services, which is by huge part driven by the money they make from selling movies and music and apps from other people. So and basically they become just a digital content provider, which every other company in the past also could have done like Sony movie. And well, despite all the digital rights management and rootkit bullshit of Sony, just as an example, not that I endorse this the most. In similar news, we are still not uh, done with Apple news because there is apparently some scandal Disclosed here by some news Apple contractors regularly hear confidential details on Siri recordings, worker here drug deals, medical details, and people having sex, says whistleblower. Apple contractors regularly hear, uh, this is the same summary, uh, providing quality. So uh, in the job providing, providing quality control or grading the company's Siri voice assistant, the Guardian has leaked, although Apple does not explicitly disclose it in their custom uh, consumer facing privacy documentation, a small portion of zero recordings are passed on to contractors. So much to Apple cares about your data. Yeah, apparently, according to this newspaper, I've not verified this, but they allegedly not disclosed in the data privacy something documentation. And yeah, I also, um, so not only is it a scandal that in my opinion, they should only do this opt in or is this their own employees. Um, I find it a scandal that the paying customers are subject to such trial and error and um, stuff. And the second scandal is, in my opinion, that Apple is such a huge company. They make so many billion profits. And apparently, just like the other news we had a month ago or six weeks ago, we had this news that apparently a white collar uh, sweat shop is running Google Assistant stuff where some whistleblower claimed that apparently this fancy Google AI stuff is not actually AI, but I don't know, restaurant bookings or what kind of stuff are manually processed by people typing it in there, uh, which is also a scandal by itself, right? Claiming the most leading artificial intelligence and then it's human intelligence. But the biggest scandal, the, big, uh, the second part of the scandal, in my opinion, which may not usually be as much talked about, is that they outsource this. You know, why can Apple, the, the richest, the most value, one of the most valuable, richest companies, they cannot regularly employ people like you would do as a sophisticated company. Even this is outsourced. And then with the precious customer data, this is, in my opinion, an even more 
of a scandal, but leave me in the comments below what you think of this stuff. Should people train on the customer data? We also probably had in other news uh, so many security horror news uh, every week that I already start to lose overview, but I think we had a similar news where this happened with um, Amazon Alexas. Artificial intelligence, quality control, human stuff, in my opinion, uh, this is not how it should be done. Maybe opt in, maybe even they should offer them like you get some discount for some services like 10% off if you participate in some better quality control program or something. This, in my opinion, would be fair if the user opts in. And in other case, I would think they should do this with their own employees, do this in a lab at home, have their some uh, even Linus tech tips can have an amazing office setup. Why does Apple need to use customer data and cannot simulate this in their lab or with the customers at home shouldn't be that difficult. I understand they need different test samples, but it's not the user's obligation and, and stuff to provide test samples. In my opinion, the company should work on the test samples, samples themselves. Um, yeah, so what other news? So yeah, a lot of uh, Apple news, but that's what it is. Unfortunately, with uh, Apple being such a big of a company and uh, popular and stuff. In similar, now comes some political news. Those people sensitive to political matters probably want to uh, tune out now, because otherwise we have some flame wars again. Uh, first thing is here, people complaining on GitHub that their account has been restricted due to US sanctions. Uh, this example, maybe not the best example, because this is from Crimea, the area there uh, annexed uh, by Russia, which I probably don't agree the most with. Maybe not the best example, but I think there were also, yeah, like um, Cuba and uh, what else? Yeah, also with the new sanction, maybe with China, I think there was something like with China or something. Um, I think there was with this new um, I uh, like Tibet and um, yeah, so this is not only Crimea, but also um, comments in the audience that I read. Um, yeah, so it's not only about Crimea, obviously, um, which I, I sort of uh, agreed to some degree, but it's also, of course, North Korea, China, this is new trade. Uh, sanctions and the bigger bigger problem is certainly of course China because uh, with this sanctions there of uh, Trump I think uh, is USA in any case that we also had already Huawei and companies like this at least temporary stopping service and services of Google updates which apparently are a little bit resolved now uh, again allegedly but of course this is a huge problem for tech companies and the problem is also, the bigger question is, first of all, the question is cloud, right? If you use cloud services, then you are on the mercy of the provider of this said cloud service to stop services and, and filter and, and stuff at their um, uh, whatever regulations. And then the bigger questions, of course, also should government, I understand this illegal stuff, if you ha like spread illegal content or copyrighted content, pirated content, uh, there are certainly some local regulations that apply, but should even international sanctions, wherever they might be, um, Crimea certainly a more uh, drastic example, but a more normal example, certainly China um, or even Taiwan, right? I mean, then China could demand uh, that they consider Taiwan they belonging to their country and then they demand international companies to sanction services to Taiwan and People's Republic of China and stuff like this. So a lot of this political, political stuff, yes. Um, always plenty of people unsubscribing as soon as I get here to any political news. But that's, of course, a, a thing, right? If you uh, work with people, maybe even who Russia will be next, who knows what happens there in the United States. And I know many people... Um, working with Russian developers, uh, Chinese developers, and so on. And this can, and these are often many, even Apple for sure, right? Even Apple and Google have plenty of outsourced or sub uh, company uh, owned stuff. And then often a VPN cannot even help you because then VPNs are banned in China and more 
starting to be banned in Russia. At least that is what they want. The last time I was there, the secure shell still worked. I also wonder how they want to really ban this in Russia or China um, because there are so many developers. If you have an IT infrastructure there, how do you want to filter all of secure shell traffic if that is what your local people need to use unless you really rule out secure shell connections and you demand all server administrations to only use the Russian FSB secure shell variant with their Russian state key there, their NSA2 key. Yeah, a whole mess that we get into there and um, yeah, probably something better for another. I only wanted to share here this uh, ongoing discussion here on GitHub, certainly relevant for many people here in the audience, I guess. And last but not least, more political news. That is why I saved them for the end when all the political sensitive people tuned out here already before huge flame wars start. But I wanted to bring to your attention that at least in Germany, it is quite big in the use that the UK unlawful copy data from the EU police system. Um, United Cam Kingdom has been illegally copying, allegedly, according to this news, classified personal information from a database served reserved for members of the passport free Schengen travel zone, which by the way, fun fact, the UK is not even part of the Schengen free travel zone, which is, but there we become, we, we are getting into uh, political uh, flame war territory again, that I was not even aware as German being able to freely travel to the UK, that UK is not part of the U, uh, Schengen free travel zone, which is not the same as uh, SEU because Switzerland is part of Schengen and maybe something else as Norway or something, but they are not part of the EU. In contrast, UK and even the rest of Ireland are not part of Schengen. I did not really ever realize this because I certainly with my national ID card could always travel there. But um, I once run into the issue traveling with someone without being an EU citizen to the UK and we had there some huge drama, which I probably say for another live stream. But so they are not even part of Schengen and yet they have access to this database and apparently an internal EU document seen by the EU observer listed years of violations by British authorities following restricted access to the Schengen information system, SES, an EU run database using police to track down undocumented migrants, missing people, stone property or unspecified uh, uns, uh, suspected criminals. The UK never joins the Schengen area, which includes 26 other European countries, most of whom are EU members. And British mismanagement and manipulation of the Schengen system also means that pen, uh, person thought forest, for instance, even for tourism related to activities by Schengen, cannot be detected upon entry in the UK, says uh, something. But the bigger scandal also is that Apparently, they shared this with other members of their Five Eyes uh, stuff. Like, um, so apparently, the UK has made numerous full and partial copies of SES, including the risk of data breach and having unlawful shared with other authorities around the world. And there you see government backdoors, right? Why is this news, first of all, uh, in general, bringing this to the attention? And um, then also the, the, the Brexit thing, right? They, they want, some, want some of the Brexit claims or ambitions are to have control over their border when already they are not part of Schengen and you can already not travel that freely there. So much to that. But then in the broader scheme of things here that we constantly in the news have government wanting access to all kinds of systems, uh, backdoors, encryption backdoors, not only this, but unrelated to this in general. And if you would think if all the news of the last decades of news are not enough, then uh, you might see this as another example when the government has access, any government, not only the UK, but, all, UK, but also the, certainly the US, Fr uh, Fr French, German, you name it, uh, not even to say Russian or Chinese. If a government has access, has a second cryptographic key to your system um, of whatever means that might be of terms of legal backdoor for the authorities, then yeah, you you bet they make a copy of all your data as soon as they can for uh, whatever means. And yeah, um, 
Yeah, that's it for today. Uh, for the usual security nightmare, uh, you guessed it. Um, of course, we have 3.3 drop frames. I hope it wasn't too bad. Um, let's probably better switch to another uh, news here because otherwise we get too many frameworks of political news. As usual, leave me in the comments below what you think about all this mess. Um, do you think your government should have access to all your data and uh, crypto backdoor and whatnot? And um, various even, yeah, let's show you something that is not as controversy. We have comments in the audience uh, said it's not a valid argument. Anyone has problems with buffering? Um, stops every 15 seconds. That is set. I enjoyed the live stream and no backdoor should be available. Thanks for that. Um, we didn't have too many drop frames though uh, only 3.3 percent um, i will watch this uh, later just to check this um, sorry to hear that but maybe next time i change some stream settings again actually the bitrate was also not too high i think five and a half 5.5 mbit but that's what you get if you were wondering that's what you get from docs shared cable uh, there even if you have whatever i think we have do we have 50 so many numbers already start to forget them. Um, let's check here. Yeah, 5.5 Mbit, which is actually not too high. Um, yeah, let's end the live stream here. Otherwise, it becomes too long anyway. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. Just too many news um, accumulated. Again, I will ideally would want to stream all of the random news on the secondary channel that you find there. I think in where would right be right side that be. Uh, down there in the recommended channel list there, my secondary more live channel, that I would want to keep most of the news there. And um, yeah, hope, uh, thanks that you enjoyed this. Um, in, by the way, for those people who were triggered in the other stream, by the way, getting a little bit hot here, we had some quite some thunderstorm and close the window here. That was not the most uh, amazing idea because now it's hot here. And um, what I want to say here, yeah. uh, for those people who are always triggered with politi political messages here, uh, maybe I may recommend that it is always a good idea to uh, discuss things and not only say, I don't agree with this argument, I unsubscribe immediately, because I guess it is better for all of us to sometimes discuss things, even if we have another opinion, and um, instead of uh, just unsubscribing, blocking, banning, uh, or flame warring, and um, usually uh, even I myself uh, often change my opinion like basic income or whatever that I initially didn't like as much as I think now is a good idea for the future in so many terms of development of our society worldwide. And um, yeah, let's maybe better discuss things instead of blocking and unsubscribing. Certainly, in my opinion, that usually helps more against this filter bubble kind of stuff and uh, I probably we can also agree that we sometimes can disagree with it. I say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I will, yeah, compile. You see so many things happening. I have actually a couple of other tweets that I will probably live stream another day. Also, the latest and greatest supersized uh, DDR4 memory coming another day. I hope it works on the Ryzen. We will test this. So no idea. Uh, we will test a little bit out of spec because certainly the AM4 board does not list it as supported. And yeah, if you want to upgrade your uh, PC right now. I think the prices, DRAM prices are quite down and you get super sized modules now. So that's certainly something for all the tech geeks out there. And I hope to see you soon for all this fun stuff to come.